Hello everyone, I'm James Milan and this is Talk of the Town and we are here outside the Arlington Police Department headquarters with our animal control officer, Diane Welch. We always like to check in uh, with Diane as regularly as we can and certainly as one season is moving into the next and we are here in, in August. It seems uh, it's come very quickly. Very quickly. But uh, yeah, we're happy to check in with you about a number of things going on Great. Um, for you and for the Arlington community at this time of year. Um, I know that one topic that, that is, is on the minds of folks a lot um, and, and regularly throughout the year these days uh, has to do with, with, with rats, actually, right. um, and the fact that there are traditional ways of approaching mm -hmm. a rat problem. and you know, more exploration of alternatives these days. Right. Just give us a sense of where, where things are at right now. It's, it's an interesting um, that you bring this up now because I've noticed, particularly I'm going to say over the last month, I have been getting more and more calls from residents that are asking, what can I use for alternatives? I don't want to use poisons. Um, we found some rat burrows in our yard. How can we treat those? And um, it's given me hope that word of mouth, um, I think that Arlington is very environmentally conscientious, but I think through word of mouth, um, the word is getting out there that the, we need to demand as consumers better alternatives from the pest control industry. Um, I think that... Just, just remind us what, what what the traditional approach to this is from the pet, sure. pest control so industry. Traditionally, if you were to call a pest control company and you had signs of rats at your house, um, they come, they put out their poisoned bait boxes. Um, you don't ask any questions. They do what they do. And um, you're happy. You may get right, a monthly bill. You're just interested bill. in getting rid of the you rats. You just want you the rats to go. Happens. And I get that. I don't want rats around me. I'm not afraid of them, but I don't want them around the schools or, or my home or um, playgrounds and so without asking questions and again going back to the problem with that rat poison is that killing the rats takes time it's a blood thin a war thin um, the rats go out and stagger and slowly die and are then eaten by hawks coyotes eagles fox um, owls did I say that no. Nope. And even sometimes people's pets, you know, I always worry about dogs or so to demand that they come up with a better alternative, I think um, it's going to come from public pressure. It's the only way that it's going to happen mm -hmm. because cost effective for the pest control industry is to just throw poison out, right? Right. And you're um, saying that the that the rats, after staggering and finally dying, then if they're eaten by these other creatures, then that rat poison may pass into the other creatures and affect right. their own health, of et cetera. Course. Or even if they bring it back to the nest, let's say it's a, a hawk and it brings it back to the nest and then poisons all of the young in that nest. So I'm seeing more, I'm getting more and more calls from residents asking, what can I use? Where can I get dry ice? Um, it works very effective in the rat burrows to pack it with dry ice, cover it up. You never see them, smell them. They die underground. It's fantastic. It's CO2 and it sinks to the very bottom of that den. Um, Sounds simple as well. To it's be able very to simple. Do that. Um, the pest control companies have labeled it, I think, because it is effective and it takes business away from them, uh, labeled it. I believe it's listed as a dangerous product, which I, I grew up with um, dry ice being used in magic shows and school plays. Mm -hmm. And um, so to me, listing that as a dangerous product and not the warfarin or the neurotoxins that they're putting out everywhere um, is a little bit, yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit ridiculous. But um, our Board of Health also has a lot of really good information. You know, if you're wondering is this a rat burrow? Is it a chipmunk hole? Um, they have great videos. They've done a lot of training in rat behavior and signs to look for in your yard if you're wondering if you do have rats. So that's also 
a great resource for people to go to. But um, I am seeing more and more calls and it gives me hope that um, there's a quote by Margaret Mead that I just love and it goes, never underestimate the power of a few concerned citizens to change the world for indeed it's the only thing that ever has. And I love that. Mm -hmm. um, grassroots And you feel movement. like that may be what it, you're seeing I'm here. hopeful. I am. Mm -hmm. I'm hopeful. So. And I, you know, with the caveat and the understanding that um, that you're not endorsing any particular approach or anything like that, um, are there other uh, other solutions out there for rat infestation beyond dry ice that, that you've already mentioned that, that people also could be looking into? Again, just as a matter of information. There are. Um, some of the um, hardware stores, home improvement stores, are carrying uh, devices that can uh, zap the rats once they go in to a baited, non-poisonous station. Um, being electrocuted, I think it would be safe to then, you know, properly dispose of it or hoping that it doesn't contain any other poisons, leave it for a predator to take. Um, there are, um, my sister and I laughed at the name of this one, there's a, a device called a better way. We loved that name. <laughs> and it's a CO2 charged metal spike that when the rat goes in it triggers it so it's it's killed instantly with the metal spike a better way. We mm -hmm. thought we love whoever picked out that name. <laughs> um, but there are sounds, electronic sounds that are supposed to um, prevent rats and mice from coming into the area. And So there's a lot of alternatives out there. I would say you know Google it Amazon it, look at the ratings and see what works for other people. Um, but uh, again, it's going to be public demand that comes up with something that is effective, cost effective, effective at eliminating rats and easily accessible to well, the public. Okay, well, talking about public demand, I have to just mention that uh, we are speaking. Um, shortly after a, uh, a gathering that you organized at, uh, at Town Hall and just uh, invited people if they wanted to know more about coyotes, uh, which have obviously been a, a more conspicuous um, uh, presence here in town um, over the last little while. Um, and, uh, and the place was packed. I was and thrilled. And you brought in an expert to talk about, you know, to educate right. basically the public. Talk to us a little bit about that evening. What was, what, you know, some of the most in, important information that was shared, and just where, you know, where things stand with coyotes in Arlington at the moment. I have to say that I was so thrilled to see such a turnout. You know, um, you offered to have these town meetings. Um, up until I announced that I was going to have a town meeting on coyotes, I was getting probably 10 to 15 calls a day on, you know, people were frightened by them. Some people love them, many were frightened. And what about children? And what about pets? And what if you're out walking? And so there was a lot of concern. The minute I announced that meeting, the calls stopped immediately, uh, which I thought was so interesting. But I went to um, Chief Flaherty and I said, you know, I, I, I see a need in education and she was so supportive and said let's do it. Right, because I think you're, what you're saying is people were frightened mostly because they didn't, they just don't know enough. They just don't understand mm -hmm. coyote behavior. Mm -hmm. And um, we brought in John from Project Coyote um, and he brought up a really good point about and in talking about the public not having great information and having that fear on coyotes and he said the news has done a great disservice to coyotes. The only time you ever hear about and what sells the news is when there's a coyote grabbing a dog or um, a coyote uh, attempting to grab a dog or someone's cat or jumping a fence or um, it never talks right, about that the disaster benefits. disaster driven news. Right. And um, it, what it doesn't mention is all of the rodents that coyotes eat, uh, the number of rabbits that they eat. I get a lot of complaints about rabbits that are eating everybody's gardens and plants. And coyotes, to me, are a great sign of a healthy ecosystem. 
and that we have enough prey items to sustain them. Um, we need them to keep the rodents in check. And um, I thought John from Project Coyote just did an amazing presentation. Every time he speaks, I learn something new from him. And I think that people left feeling a little bit more empowered, knowledgeable and empowered um, as to what to do if you encounter one. He taught us how to properly haze one. And I even got a letter from a gentleman. He had contacted me before the meeting was planned. And he said, you know, um, we can hear howling at night from our home. Summertime, the windows are open and my wife is terrified. And then she can't get back to sleep. And, and she was really frightened. And it was so great because he sent me a letter after the meeting and he said, we left with a better understanding. My wife is no longer afraid. And when she hears the howling, she's not frightened and can sleep through the night now. And that, that made my day. Just even that little bit of a change, peace of mind to that woman and to that husband. Um, and that's what we, the message we were hoping to get out there. So um, it went really well. Yeah, um, and I just, excuse the interruption, but yeah. I do want to remind people because we're referring to it, that ACMI was there to yes. be able to tape it, it live and that you can find the entire presentation um, on ACMI at ACMI.tv yes. um, and, uh, and by all means go check it out because as you said it was chock full of There's useful information. so much to learn um, in how to keep your small dog safe. Um, you know we touched on the subject of outdoor cats and um, what to do if you encounter one, how to properly haze it. I had actually run into a a few coyote situations in my own yard and I had called John from Project Coyote and said you know what's going on and he said you didn't haze it right and I thought what do you mean I didn't haze it right I thought I knew exactly what to do mm -hmm. but I didn't I was hazing it wrong he was exactly right in what he explained for me to do but knew exactly what that coyote was going to do and it did just what he said mm -hmm. so um, so just explain it very briefly what hazing is for, for, for folks. So hazing is trying to get a coyote to move on, move out of your area, um, and... So not just get rid of him or her temporarily, but... but to, to put a fear into it that okay. um, this isn't a comfortable place for you to hang out. Okay. And of course, for me, I had always heard, as many people, hazing is to yell, make yourself as big as you can, um, bang on pots and pans, whatever, and make a big ruckus. And I did that um, and yelled, and I went up to the coyote and kind of confronted it right to the wood line. Um, what John was saying is that it's all in the eye contact, right? And we talked about, um, there's a saying, eyes in front likes to hunt, eyes on the side likes to hide. So think of rabbits with their eyes on the side. And it's so that they can see predators coming from any direction, right? Eyes in front, who but humans is one of the biggest predators on Earth, mm -hmm. I think. And so you approach that coyote making eye contact. You walk right at it, making eye contact. John said that it's going to run off. It's gonna stop, I forget if he said 20 feet or 20 yards off and it's gonna reevaluate. It's gonna turn and look to see what you, and it's exactly what they do. If you stop right there, you've taught it, I'm not gonna follow through with it. So you keep walking right at it, eye contact, then it's gonna hide. So you're supposed to put your hands on your hips and kind of scan the area, the woods or wherever, as it's hiding, like you are the predator. I'm the predator, you need to be wary of me. And that's the proper way to haze it. So mm -hmm. I loved, that it wasn't carrying on and yelling um, and making myself as big as possible. Um, and that didn't work. Right. I was doing it wrong. Right. Yeah. Very interesting, because I do think that that's going to take some training right? for people just yeah. to do what, what is recommended. It's all in the you eyes. Know, looking at, just walking right at them, yep. et cetera, because of course. And you can uh, clap your hands, and but it's eye contact mm -hmm. and walking like you're the boss, you're the predator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Um, We've talked about uh, rat poison, uh, rat poison alternatives, and then and then coyotes. Two two big topics in Arlington at the moment. But uh, what are some of the other things that are going on? Again, as we're starting to move into fall or finishing out with summer, regrettably. Uh, I know so fast. 
Um, it's funny because I was just talking to um, Kylie that works at the Board of Health, amazing young woman. And I think that we have had, I was asking her yesterday, is it six, is it seven, is it eight incidents where people have found a bat in their home? In some instance, instances, children are in the home, everybody's sleeping at night, the bat could have been flying anywhere through the home. And so that, to us, we take very seriously is a possible exposure where you could be bit by a bat, their teeth are so tiny and so sharp that you don't even know that you're bit. So we need to catch that bat and have it tested for rabies. Um, if we can't catch that rat, uh, rat the bat, that bat <laughs> and let's say somebody lets it out and there is a possible exposure, we always tell the residents to follow up with their doctors or pediatricians and follow their instructions and often that is to go through a set of rabies shots. Um, rabies protocol is very black and white. There is no gray area and that's why we don't have much rabies in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. It's very strict. And um, so I rely on Kylie's expertise in that I'll get the bat if I can catch it in the home and get it to her. She knows just how to package it. It's very particular in double, triple packaging it, refrigerating it, um, labeling it, biohazard, calling couriers, and getting it to the state lab in Jamaica to be tested. Um, even if your pets have become exposed to it, sometimes you'll find your cat playing with the bat in the house. Um, we want, of course, all pets to be up to date on their rabies shots, but if that bat is not accessible for testing, then we're gonna do a 10-day quarantine on those pets to observe them and make sure that they're safe. Mm -hmm. So if you have a bat in your house, it seems to be a pattern we've seen in the last week and a half, um, call animal control. Um, we want to, if at all possible, um, it says, Kylie and I were talking a little bit on how to get the right message out in that some people can trap it themselves safely, only if safely, with a coffee can and then sliding a piece of cardboard and to then you've got it, it mm -hmm. and put something on top of it until I can get there or somebody can get there to um, get it to be shipped off for testing. So we want access, if there's a po any possible exposure to humans, we want to be able to test that bat. And you were, what you were just describing is a process for that testing that you were, you were saying that Kylie supervises. Um, should people um, wait, wait for the results of that testing before you know, having their, themselves, their children, their pets checked out? Or should they go ahead and do that? That's a really regardless? good question. And that's why we always defer them to their doctor or pediatrician. So they should make that call. I want them to make that call with their doctor. I've had a case where um, two little children were playing in their sunroom and were, came in, one came in crying to the mom and said, I'm scared. And she said, what are you scared about? And went out, the child was barefoot and there was a little bat kind of crushed into the rug. So did that child step on the bat? Probably. Um, and the dad in his panic took the bat, picked it up with gloves, and threw it in the middle of the street, threw it out of the house, and then it was run over. I need that bat in the best possible condition to have it tested. Um, so I flew over there to get it, to pick it up off the street. It was able to be tested. Thank goodness it was negative, but they started the children on rabies shots um, right away. Mm -hmm. They were so frightened. Mm -hmm. And so we always refer them to their doctor or pediatrician, follow that doctor's instructions. Okay. They're gonna know best. So definitely, as soon as the bat is contained, mm -hmm. contact your, your doctor Absolutely. or pediatrician and Absolutely. go from there. And thank goodness, all the bats that we have sent to the lab to be tested have all come back negative. Thank goodness. Yeah, so, great. Um, but just so that you know what to do if you ever should find yourself in a situation where there's a bat in your house. And I know a lot of people are afraid of bats. I love them. Um, I even got bit myself catching one in a woman's living room last week and I had my little gloves on 
and I thought the head, I thought it was hanging upside down, right, like bats do, mm -hmm. but the head was up. So when I grabbed it, it was, and I got a picture of it, and it looked so ferocious. They're adorable. But their tiny teeth. <laughs> ferocious and adorable. They're huh? so cute. I love them. And they eat thousands of insects, so we need them. Um, but that little bite can be so minute that you don't even know you've been bitten. Um, so we always, uh, always err on the side of precaution when it comes to rabies. And right, as you just mentioned, rabies in the context of rats, I, I mean rats, bats, excuse me. Um, but I think people usually associate that as a danger, a potential danger with dog bites as right, well. Right, right. Um, and I know that, that, that you've got some, some news to share with us around that too. Right, so dog bites, um, it's funny when we were talking about, <coughs> excuse me, coyotes, I wanted to share with everybody at the meeting and, and never did, but I get reports from the Board of Health anytime someone is bitten by a dog or a cat or a dog or cat is bitten by another animal and brought to the vet, we get what's called a bite report. Often it's sent to the Board of Health, they then send it to me and I will follow up where animals need to be quarantined, we need proof of rabies. So. Um, I wish that more people knew that when their dog or their child or anything gets bit by another dog or cat, a domesticated animal, um, I would like you to treat it like a car accident. In other words, I know it's a very emotional, it's frightening, people are heated in the moment, um, defensive, try to take a deep breath and remember to exchange information. Very similar to a car accident. Very though, right? similar to a car accident. We want to exchange information, not for good dog, bad dog. Um, it's more that I need to know that that dog or the biter is up to date on its rabies shots, right? Once I have that information, both dogs, um, or if it's a dog biting a child or whatever, it's going to be quarantined for 10 days anyway which sounds terrible, but it only means that you can't leave the state with the dog. You can still walk it on a leash. You can't go to a dog park. In other words, we don't want a chance of that dog biting anybody Correct. else. Mm -hmm. But always try to remain calm and exchange information. Um, it's terrible that in some cases, people will get their dogs and kind of run off. They're afraid of a liability or a lawsuit or you know, having to pay vet bills or and um, well, I just want to ignore, like, uh, pretend it never happened. Pretend right? it I never think that's happened. A human impulse, right? And um, but you need to get. We need that information again. Rabies protocol. I want to know that everybody's going to be safe. Everybody's up to date on their rabies shots. And then it's a simple procedure. Ten day quarantine. A peek at the dogs. Everybody's fine. You're free to go. So always try to get that information. Um, from the other person parties involved. You always want to treat it like a car accident. Get, get the information. Phone number, name, the name of their vet, all of that information. Okay. It's, it's critical. And then I, if they don't provide the information, I can get it. So, Another issue that you know folks in Arlington run into uh, on occasion um, is, is stray dogs, lost right. dogs. Um, any uh, thoughts or guidance for folks about how to deal with that? I have to say that, so we don't have many, um, let's say, wild dogs running the streets of Arlington, thank goodness. <laughs> but whenever, and it happens often, I get a call, there's a dog seen running on such and such a street. Anytime that I get to that location, the dog is nowhere to be found. Nowhere to be found. They're on the run. Thank goodness, almost every single time some compassionate person in Arlington has an extra leash or gets the collar, holds on to the dog till I, and calls me till I can get there, or the owner is frantically looking, it just got escaped the gate. Often they have people, contractors working at the house, they left the gate open and the dog got out. And thank goodness, almost every single time, the kind people of Arlington have stepped in to help that dog and I think saved it from being hit by a car. Um, and um, there's a lot of compassion 
and kindness in Arlington and I get to see it every day. There's a lot more. It renews my faith in humanity every day. And you know, we sometimes in talking to friends and the craziness that's going on in the world and it can be a bit overwhelming and I, and I say to people, you know what? There is more kindness in the world. I get to see it every day. I see it, I know it's true. There's more kindness than not. And yeah. uh, I've got to say, I'm just gonna cite the ovation you yourself received um, at the coyote, you know, the, the public gathering for around coyote information, that must have been very heartwarming as you well. Know, you know how you're embraced by this community. I am so humbled by the kindness and the support that I truly am humbled by it. Um, Arlington loves animals. They have loved me and supported me, and honestly, their kindness has kept me going because I get to see more kindness than not. And um, that was so touching to me at that. In fact, um, I was re-watching some of the um, ACMI.TV, re-watching <laughs> it, and I said to my husband, look, you have to see this, Steve. I said, look at that. And he was just like, wow. And I said, I know. My heart was just so full, and I was so thrilled that that many people showed up. They were supportive and enthusiastic, and um, I went to bed that night with a big smile on my face, so relieved and so satisfied that it went so well, really. Well, we, we've covered coyotes and rats and bats and, and dog dogs. bites. Is there anything else that you wanna share? It seems to be, I'm just seeing in the last week, and it's even made me aware at home, skunks are on the move right so be careful with your dogs uh, be aware it's an awful feeling when your dog gets sprayed by a skunk um, but they I've had several calls on skunks in just the last week if your dog does get sprayed by did I say your skunk gets sprayed nope. if your dog gets sprayed right. by you started I thought out I right, mixed it up good. if your dog gets sprayed by a skunk number one don't let it in the house or your vehicle if you can avoid it you need hydrogen peroxide, baking soda, a little bit of Dawn dish detergent. I put it in a metal pan because I didn't want the smell um, to be in like a plastic bowl or whatever. Uh, a metal pan. I added some warm water, an old face cloth, and I kept my dog outside. Once that smell comes inside, it's, you go nose blind and it's gonna be there for a long time and bathe the dog. You can put that mixture in a spray bottle, if you have one handy, and then work it in with plastic gloves on, work it into the fur, and then rinse. But that is the magic formula. It will remove the smell. Um, don't let it into your house if you can wash it outside. And I added not ice cold water from the hose, but warmish water to that mixture. Hydrogen peroxide, baking soda, Dawn dish detergent. Mix it up. Wash that dog, you can do it with the face cloth if it's around, like my dog who barks and then gets sprayed down the throat, which is fabulous. <laughs> um, and it's, it's so effective at removing that skunk spray. So I would say, be warned, skunks are on the move right about now, and uh, I'm be curious, careful. Uh, this is not a product endorsement. I'm curious about uh, that, the, the fact that you designated Dawn as the, as the dish detergent in there. Is, it, is there something that people really should be getting that particular one? Yes. It's not just any And so dish even detergent. Dawn dish detergent is what's used. It cuts through oils better than I'm sure there are other brands that maybe are as good. I don't, we always say Dawn. If you think of it for, um, my sister is a, a wildlife biologist and went down south for one of the big oil spills. Was it the... Um, Valde I mean, not the, 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 the one in the Gulf of Mexico. The big one in the yeah. Gulf of Mexico. Yeah. And they used Dawn dish detergent to get the birds to bathe them, hundreds of them a day, because it cuts through the grease so well, but it's gentle, and um, rinse them and release. It cuts through that grease. It cuts through that oily scent of that skunk. Mm -hmm. So we always recommend Dawn dish detergent. Okay, and I, it's I'm, really I, just a mixture of these ingredients. Yep. If people want to know more, can yep. they? You can Google it. Okay. Google it. It doesn't matter 
the measurements. I did a good dose of hydrogen peroxide, like three tablespoons of baking soda, a couple of good drops of Dawn. I don't want it too foamy. Mm -hmm. Some warm water, a towel, gloves, and it got every bit of smell off of him. Great. Yeah. So, and pe people shouldn't worry about the ratios there, it sounds like. Make sure there's a mix of those ingredients. That's Get right. It on the dog. I had a friend whose dog house. just got sprayed Sunday, and I felt so bad for her. And she said, I sent my daughter for tomato soup or tomato paste. And I was like, no, that's not going to work. That's old school. You need to try this. So um, it really does work. So. All right. So we've added skunks to our, 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 mix. our mix today. Um, anything we've missed that, that people should know as we head into fall? I was hoping that, just as a side note, um, that baby season was done. Um, I felt I, I this is I, animal baby season. Yeah, animal baby season. I laughed, con referring to myself as the midwife for all of the animal wild animals in Arlington, with baby birds, bunnies, squirrels, raccoons, possums, and um, I thought that baby season was done. And we're still, I'm still getting calls for baby squirrels, pinkies this big, and baby bunnies. And I want everybody to talk to their uh, resident squirrels and bunnies to just say, it's time to rest. Just stop it. It's time for us to rest. Baby season is done. <laughs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> we're done. Let oh, them know. Get the word out. Get the word out. We're done. <laughs> All right. It's time to rest. And I think... Maybe we're done, at least with this conversation, All right. at least for today. Always good to talk to you. Yes. Thank you so very, much. Very, very good to talk to you Thank as you. always. And we'll, we'll be back again All without, right. before too long. Yes, in the fall. We'll see what's going on in the fall, what's on the move, and migrations, and getting ready for winter. And We'll look forward to it. All right, me too. All right, always a pleasure to talk to our animal control officer, Diane Welch. And we're glad to do so. Glad you were here for it. I'm James Milan. This is Talk of the Town. Thanks for being here.